Hello and welcome to this short clip which goes through the basics of doing KP calculations. Like it says in the grey box, as always, it's for watching after you've done your independent study and you've got some notes to work from because it's not going to go through every single detail or all the possible permutations and examples you can come across. So it's important to first point out that KP only applies to gases in equilibrium. Any species in the um, equilibrium that are not in uh, the gaseous state don't go into the KP expression. So the KP idea and the KP expression can be applied to homogeneous or heterogeneous equilibria. So the value for KP is written and mathematically calculated in exactly the same way as a KC expression. The reason for this is that when we deal with gases, pressure and concentration are effectively the same thing. The only real difference is the way in which they're measured and expressed. So pressure is measured and expressed in pascals, but concentration is measured and expressed in moles per decimeter to the minus 3. So if we now have a look at um, two equilibria, one is homogeneous and one is heterogeneous, it should be quite easy to tell which is which. So how would we write the KP expression for each of these? So in the top one everything's a gas like I've said so you can include its partial pressure in the KP expression. In the bottom one uh, only the carbon dioxide is a gas so only carbon dioxide's partial pressure goes into the KP expression. So let's focus on where the partial pressure comes from. So if we imagine a gaseous mixture of three, these three gases, now if we imagine that each dot represents one mole, we can say there's six moles of hydrogen gas, there's three moles of iodine vapour, and four moles of hydrogen iodide. So that gives us uh, 13 moles of gas in total. So, if we take the expression for working out mole fractions, moles of component gas over total moles of gas, you can see that it's quite easy to work out the mole fraction. It's also quite easy to check whether that adds up to 1. Now, obviously I've done a little bit of rounding here, but if you were to take calculator values for 6 over 13, 3 over 13, 4 over 13, and, and add them up, you would get 1. When you Pause the clip and try it on your calculators to make sure that you're happy with that method. So the next thing to do is to take these partial pressures and turn them into, sorry, I beg your pardon, take these mole fractions even and turn them into partial pressures. So if we put the expression to use to work out partial pressure at the bottom of the screen, but keep the mole fractions there, if we now assume a total pressure of 5,000 kilopascals, we can do each gas in turn. So multiplying each of the partial pressures by, sorry, the mole fractions by the total pressure, I get uh, the three individual partial pressures. So it's always a good idea to check that all the mole fractions add up to one, all the partial pressures add up to the total pressure. And if they don't, it means you've over-rounded somewhere and you'll need to go back and check your maths and adjust until they do. So now we can work out Kp for this particular um, reaction. So we end up with 1535 squared over 2310 times 1155. So remembering that the units on the numerator and the denominator in this case cancel, so there's no units for Kp. So when you get your final value, if there are no units like we have here, it's always a good idea to put that in brackets so the examiner knows that you've worked it out. So at the top of the screen, I've put a little method that we followed during this clip. Um, you may wish to jot this down on a flashcard and go and try it out on some other examples. In the meantime, thanks for your listening.